Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Maracaibo using the Uprising expansion. You can play this game competitively, cooperatively, or solo. We're going to play the cooperative rules, so doing that scenario, but only playing one character, so you can actually do that. You can also play the campaign solo as well, and the base game comes with a campaign, and then the expansion comes with another campaign, which is really cool. I haven't even started trying those. The only way I have played this so far is the co-op rules, and I really like it. Before we jump into our playthrough, don't forget to turn on those Klingon subtitles. I will use those if I miss any rules that I don't catch in editing. All right, without further ado, let's jump in to setup. The first part of setup is determining which modules you're going to use from the expansion when you play this. We're playing cooperation in the Caribbean, so we're essentially trying to free the people in, Car in, in the Caribbean from the three different nations, France, Spain, and England. In the base game, you're actually helping France, Spain, and England colonize, and yeah, there can be a... <laughs> some thematic issues there, so to speak. But here, we're actually trying to free the people from these different nations. Kind of makes you think of Spirit Island in a, in a sense. You'll then want to grab the legacy card specific to that scenario that you're playing, and it'll have some setup rules. So you're going to see here, we need to place nation token, uh, uh, nation cubes, uh, depending upon which nations they are. So France in spots two through seven, Spain in eight through 13, and England 14 through 19. We're, because we're playing a one player game, we do one cube per location. However, locations nine through 16 are empty because we wouldn't have enough combat actions to be able to do all of that and still potentially win the game. The other thing is each game you'll have a random assortment of legacy tiles out on the board. I've already done this, but what, what I've done is for each column, I've drawn one card and then looked at what symbol they have on the left side and chosen which of those legacy tiles to use. So you'll always start with L1, but then there's these other tiles that we potentially have placed out on the board. So one of them, if I had drawn this herb, I would have placed out um, the L2 for the first time that I drew. Second time, I would have placed out L7, and the third time, I'd place out L4. Here is an example of one of the legacy tiles that we ended up drawing, L7. This gives us a whole another city we can potentially go to, but we can't go to it until our explorer gets to this spot on our track. You can see this uh, brown line that denotes it. But here, you can do a pretty awesome city action uh, that you wouldn't normally be able to do in a regular game of Maracaibo. The other two legacy tiles that we drew are over here. This one just means it costs three movement to move from a Petite Grave over here to Tortuga. Normally that only costs one movement, but we have replaced that with a three. And then this one over here, if you end your movement there, you automatically gain one of your workers to your supply. So you take it from your general supply to your personal supply. The legacy tile you'll always play with when freeing the Caribbean is the Puerto Cabezas. This one gives you a city that you can actually complete one of these quest tiles. I've placed out all of the influence cubes for the three nations. You can see here Spain actually only has one location, location eight. France has all of these locations and England just has these three. So in order for us to win the game, we need to remove all of those influence cubes and beat Jacques, who is the AI we're playing against. After completing the front side of this card, we'll flip it over and we can see we start with a quest in location 19 for one to four players. If we were playing with four, we'd also place one in location nine. Location 19 here, we have placed one of our quest tiles. If when we go here, we spend our main action and give up two maps, we'll get the benefit that's down here. On the bottom of the board, we have our exploration track. You're going to place out one quest in each of these spots and these quests will not refresh. Once someone claims them, either myself or Jacques, they'll be removed and no one else can get those. Quests are helpful to give you benefits when you claim them, but they also, if you get a certain amount of them, you can gain additional points. So quests are always good to have, and Jacques will try and take these. The rest of the quests are shuffled up and actually placed face up here so you know which one is coming next the next time we place out a new quest. Next, we have our combat tiles. I've just shuffled those up, placed them face down into these two piles. Whenever we draw, we can draw from either pile. Now, if you're playing competitively, you would also use this um, influence track, but in this cooperative scenario, you don't use that at all. Now we can set up our cities. You can see there are two different circle types on the board. There's these smaller circles. Those are considered villages. These larger circles are considered cities. 
after you do your move, you have to do a main action depending upon which location that you're at. So these cities all have different abilities. And what I've done is on the back side, you can see it says one to four player. I've grabbed all of the city tiles that were for my player count, which is one, shuffled them up and placed them out on the board. Because I'm playing a one or a two player game, I've also replaced the Maracaibo here on the board with the one that has one less good that you can deliver, just because we're only playing with one or two players. Next, we have the four prestige buildings. I've shuffled all of those up, randomly grabbed four, and in the first round, we'll reveal the first one. And this one is a military base. These prestige cards provide you with end game scoring. So if I spend 20 doubloons during the game and place one of my workers on this card so I no longer have it to use, if I'm the first one to do that, which the AI will never do that, so I will be, I'll gain a one-time benefit of two victory points. I gain a synergy token. And then at the end of the game, I will gain two victory points per combat token that I have. So it may be quite expensive. 20 doubloons is expensive, but usually these can give you a ton of points for endgame. I've placed to the side of the board these synergy tokens. A lot of cards will gain certain benefits if you have these synergy tokens. You can only have one of each type and the AI doesn't grab any, so I just have one of each type here. I'm going to try and grab, well, either as many as I can or maybe try and get as many synergies off of one specific type of these tokens because a lot of cards will trigger or gain benefits if you have these. One of the best parts of this game are the project cards. So let's set up our project deck. First thing is you need to break them out between A and B cards. B have these darker ropes around and A's are lighter. I wish they would have just put an A or B in the corner because sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> uh, but what we need to do is shuffle the A cards all together and we'll deal out eight to each player. Now I'm the only player playing, so I'll just get eight cards. After that, we'll take a random assortment of 40 of these, of these B cards, and shuffle them in to this deck of A cards. And then we'll reveal four of them out on the table that we could potentially buy during that round. After spending 10 minutes shuffling all of that together, you can see how big that stack of cards is. I mean, it's probably about 300 cards. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, you have the four that you could potentially buy to your hand by spending one doubloon. We'll take a look at the A cards in my hand and what we need to do with that in a second. We've completed the setup on the board. Now we're going to do our personal setup. Here we have our ship. Oh, I love this. So down here, we'll hold all of our quests that we complete. We'll have all of our combat tokens that we have here. We have two of these tokens in each of the 12 spots on our board. So we can unlock potentially 24 abilities on our board as we play the game. You're going to be removing these. And then when you remove them, you then gain the benefit. Either it's a one-time effect if it's beige, or if it's red, it gives you a new ability. For example, this one means that we can actually claim a card that's in that market area. Uh, and normally it costs one doubloon. We can get one for zero, which is cool. Or this one, our hand size normally is four, but if we complete this one, our hand size is six. Unique to this scenario are these two specific tiles. This one over here gives you a one-time effect of four doubloons when you unlock it. And then it gives you an action that you can do in the village by spending three combat tokens and removing one of those influence markers. You always have this lower section available to you, even if this isn't unlocked. That's the only kind of confusing part here. And every time you remove an influence marker, you'll actually place it here and gain the benefit. The only thing is, is you can't have the same color next to each other. You see how it says not equal to? So I couldn't have two England cubes here. I'd have to have an England, a France, England, you know, whatever. Uh, and then once I complete all four of those, I'll remove all of those cubes, get this one-time benefit, and then I can fill them up again. We also have new combat actions. So we can spend five combat points to remove one of the influence markers in a city or three to remove one in a village. And then if we unlock this, we can also do this action. So in this game, whenever you do combat, you can do one of each. So if let's say I had 10 total combat, I could do one from the city, one from a village, and then another one, because when I upgrade this, I can do another one from the village. You can do once each. On the top section of our ship, we have our combat points. You start with one. We start with two workers in our supply. And then when playing this game cooperatively, you have to randomly grab a career card instead of having two to choose from. And the one I grabbed was Urge of Discovery. There's only four that work in the co-op scenario. So instead of having, I think there's nine in total, you only have four to choose from. These are different things that we can complete. We don't have to. If we complete them, we not only get the worker, but we get either uh, doubloons or victory points. And if we complete all three, we get another two victory points, two coins, and then we flip this card over. 
So we want two or three quests. So if we do two, we just get two coins. But if we get three, we get two victory points and two coins. We need to have four or five ship upgrades. And on the Explorer track, we want to get to the double blue line or the triple green line. And then if we do complete all three of these, we flip this card. We then have three more workers in our general supply that we can potentially earn during the game. Now you might be wondering, Colin, why is this section of your ship empty? <laughs> well, with the expansion comes home ports. You draw two of them and you get to choose one that you want to use during the game. The two we can choose from are the Cayman Islands or Bremen. There is a one-time effect. When we unlock it, we can pay one doubloon for 10 points. This one's four doubloons for 10 points. And then we have an ongoing effect for the rest of the game. This one says sugar replaces any good or object. And that's kind of amazing because there's a, whenever you're completing those quests, you need specific objects. And a lot of times when you're delivering goods, you need a specific good. So if I have a sugar, it can be any of those. Over here, as a village action, we can spend two tobacco to gain five doubloons. I think this one is better in my opinion. Also, one doubloon for 10, 10 victory points just seems too good to pass up on. We've now slotted that into our ship, and once we remove these two tokens, we'll have this ability active and can pay one doubloon for 10 victory points. We can now move back to the eight project cards that we drew. What we're going to do is choose four of these to keep in our hand, choose one that we want to prepare, and then discard the other three. So I'm going to look at these and make that determination. I've decided to keep these four project cards in our hand. Now these cards are multi-use. You can spend the doubloons and resources potentially if you need uh, as a village action to be able to put it out and then you get the abilities that are down here. Or if you need to complete quests, you have objects down at the bottom. So you can see I have two herbs, I have a map, and I have a spyglass. Or if I'm trying to deliver goods, we've got goods on the top. We've got corn, sugar, tobacco, and sugar. So all these cards can be used in multitudes of ways. At the top of your shipboard, you have three spaces where you can prepare cards. These are cards that you really feel comfortable that you're going to build. If I don't build this, I can't remove it from here. I can't use it for any of the resources here. It's just going to clog up my prepare area. Anytime as a free action on our turn, we can place project cards here, and that allows us to draw more cards to our hand, but we do want to make sure that we can build them. I chose the treasurer. Now he's super expensive at 16 doubloons. He'll score us three points at the end of the game, but he gives us the anchor synergy token, and I like that. He also will move us up on the income track by three, and I'll show you that in a second. And then if we have five ship upgrades, which is what I'm aiming for, we'll be able to increase our victory point income for the rest of the game. When you're playing with one player, you start with eight doubloons. These are fives, these are twos, and these are ones. These are upgraded tokens from Top Shelf Gamer. I'll put a link in the description below if you like them. I really like how they look. The only thing I don't like is they don't have numbers on them, so I have to remember five, two, and one. <laughs> Next, we need to place our explorer at the beginning of the exploration track, and Jacques also has an explorer. I don't know why these aren't wooden. Come on. <laughs> they could have been wooden, but instead they're cardboard, so we'll just deal with it. We also have a victory point marker here. So does Jacques. We both start at zero. There's an income track on the top of the board. You start at eight income. So at the end of each round, you'll gain eight income. But anything that's in this green banner is going to increase either your income for money or doubloons or income in victory points. That victory point tracker is here. We start at zero as we move up. Every round will gain that many victory points. We're so close to being ready to start our playthrough. We do need to set up Jacques though. So we already saw he has a victory point token and an explorer, explorer token. That's it. He then has a deck of cards. He has A's and B's. And depending upon the difficulty level, and we're going to do medium, we remove a certain amount of cards. So we have a total of seven cards that he's going to use each time we play. We're going to remove three B and two A cards for the medium difficulty. We've removed those cards and now we have a deck of seven cards that we'll use for our four rounds of play. I almost forgot to show you, we place our ship in Havana. So I'm placing our ship there and we're finally ready to start our playthrough. Let's look at what we can do on our turn and then jump in. There are three phases for our turn. The first one is we have to move our ship a minimum of one to a maximum of seven spaces around the board. After that, depending upon where we end our movement, we'll either do a city where we can deliver a good and then do the action. If we end at a village, depending on how much we moved, we get a certain amount of village actions. And these are our three village action types. We can buy a card that's in our hand, gain a doubloon, or discard our entire hand for two, uh, two doubloons. We can fulfill a quest that's in our space, 
if we have an assistant in our space that we've put out in a previous turn, we could go there and do that action. And then we have two anytime actions that we can do. Fulfill one of our careers. And so that would be if we'd completed two or three quests, we can get one of our workers. Uh, or we can start a project, putting it into our prepared area. After that, we will redraw cards back up to our hand size, which is currently four. If we buy one from the display or more than one, it costs a doubloon for everyone that we do. Don't worry about combat. We'll talk about that when we do it. Now, you might be wondering, why don't I always just move one space each time? Well, this game is somewhat of a race. If someone gets to the end of the track, so if it was us that gets there before Jacques does, we'll score three additional points because of that. If he gets to location 20 before we do, he scores an additional 15 points. So in general, you don't want to, you know, dink around. <laughs> when you're playing competitively, that can be quite different from what I understand. But at least in playing against the AI, they're going to claim end of round between five, six, and seven for the amount of turns in a, in a round. And we only have four rounds. So we've got to get a lot done and claim more victory points and remove all of these influence tokens before that. So our first thing that we're going to do for our move, and here I am talking about all these things we need to do, but the first thing we're going to do is just move to space one. We're going to go to Santiago. Because we've moved to Santiago, we now can deliver, because these spaces are open, one tobacco here. If we do that, we get to remove one of those tokens from our shipboard. Then we can do the action here, which is gaining another one of our workers from the supply and do one of those village actions. I have this erect fort card in my hand, not planning on buying it. So what I'm going to do is use it for the tobacco. So I'm going to discard this card and I'm going to remove one of those uh, tokens on my ship to say that I essentially had some tobacco on there and I sold it at Santiago. I do want to mention, if you want to see another great playthrough of this cooperative scenario, uh, Jplay has one on his channel. I'll put a link in the description below. I forgot to say that at the beginning. <laughs> so I'm going to remove the token from here because I only need to remove one more and then my hand size goes from four to six. That's generally a good idea to do right away because it just gives you so many more options. I'll then place this token here to show that I have delivered that tobacco. Let's say you can't play with five players. Let's say that there were five players and all four of those spaces were filled up. That fifth player then wouldn't be able to deliver tobacco because Santiago already got the tobacco they needed for that round. Now I'll just gain one of these workers from our general supply, put it into our supply. We now have three available to us and we'll do a village action. I kind of can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to. I'm going to prepare two cards that are in my hand because I like both of them. See how they all have something that triggers on that anchor? That's why I wanted the treasure out so bad because I happened to draw all three of them. But this one, I need to pay six combat points to be able to put it out. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. But I wanted to prepare all of those because my one village action, I'm going to discard my entire hand. Well, my hand only has one card in it, but that's okay. That will still give me two more doubloons. So I'll go from having eight doubloons to now having 10 doubloons. You can't discard your entire hand if you don't have any cards in your hand. So that's why I had to leave at least one in my hand. We have moved our ship, done our main action, and now we can draw up to our hand size, which is four. I'm not gonna grab any from the display because I don't want them. Ooh, I like this guy. He just lets you remove an additional token on your board. It makes uh, getting your ship going faster. The Patreon, oh, I should mention this. In this scenario, because there's no influence, you're not gaining influence with these different nations. Instead, every time you receive influence, you'll gain two victory points. If you have to lose influence for a card, then you lose two victory points. Okay, so that card isn't great for us. It's only worth two points. Uh, this one is the Expedition. Ooh, more income generation. I like that. And then we have the Depot. After our turn, it goes back to Jacques. Jacques will cover this up right here. And you can see it has one of these brown tokens. That means he's going to place a brown token on location four. He also, at the end of the round, will score five points for this card. If, for an example, we had drawn this in round five, you can see here it says 20. That means he'd claim end of round. And if we didn't claim end of round before he did, <laughs> we would then give him an additional 15 points. Even though Jacques doesn't have a boat on the board, think of him moving from Havana all the way to location four, which is Puerto Plaza, or Plata, and he essentially delivered this uh, corn. And so now if we go there, which I was thinking of going there, <laughs> uh, if I go there, I can't deliver that corn, so I can't remove tokens from my board. Oh, that's, that's mean. But he, I love how Jacques does that just like a regular player would. 
it would be great to be able to get a hand size of six at the end of this turn. So what I'm going to do is move to one, two, to location five. Now I can deliver that corn, but unfortunately my hand has no corn. I didn't draw any corn and I have not unlocked my special ability that would allow me to use sugar as corn. So I cannot deliver. But what I can do is increase my combat value by one and just remove one of the tokens on my board. This will mean I'll move up to two combat points. Remember, I have that one card I want to build that costs six combat points. <laughs> and I'm just going to remove this token, and now my hand size is six. Now, you cannot in this game just discard cards willy-nilly, so I have to keep the four in my hand. But at the end of my turn, I get to draw two more. We drew the native and the cartographer. Jacques will now draw his second card, and we can see here he's just going to move one up on the exploration track. For all of these if it had been round seven when we drew this he'd claim end of round i was very much hoping he'd move up on this track because how this track works first of all whichever location you end at you gain the benefit of that spot however jacques doesn't but we do so if i'd ended my movement of my explorer here i'd gain two points or i'd gain a coin or i could remove a token off of my ship but you also jump over each other so now if i get two exploration i'd go one two instead of just one two and ending here so I like that he's ahead of us now. Hopefully we'll get ahead of him later. And I should mention that for the cooperative variant, at the end of the game, you're going to compare the amount of quests that Jacques has to the amount that you have. If you have the same amount, nothing happens. If he has more, you'll lose five points. And if you have more, you'll gain five points. Same thing with the exploration track. If he's farther along, you'll lose five points. If you're farther along, you'll gain five points. We're now at turn three, and unfortunately, I had to forego doing this exploration to come over here, but I think it was worth it. We're going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, coming all the way over to Maracaibo. We'll be able to do a combat action after we deliver some sugar. I have this depot here. I don't think I'm going to build. It has sugar on here, so we'll discard this, and that means we can remove one of those tokens on our board and place it here. I'd really like my Cayman Islands ability, so I'm going to remove the token from here. We'll place it on Maracaibo to show that we delivered that, and now we're going to draw our top combat token. Combat's kind of interesting in this game. In the original game, after revealing this combat tile, you have to choose which of the three nations you want to fight for. This time, we're just deciding which one we want to fight against. <laughs> so if we choose uh, England, we gain four combat points. If we choose Spain, we gain five. If we choose France, we gain two, but we also gain an assistant. This area up here, you can ignore that. That's only used for the competitive version. There's only one Spanish cube on the board, but I think I'm still going to go for it. I'll gain five combat points. Now, I'm not using the combat points on my board. I'm instead using the five here. I could spend those on my board and during combat only spend some of my workers that are in my supply to add one to my combat value if I'd like. With five combat points, I could remove one of the influence markers from any city. However, the Spanish only have a village, so I only needed a three. I'm wasting the other two. That's fine by me, though. We have been able to liberate this village. We'll remove this uh, influence cube. And if we're able to, we can place that influence marker on one of these four spots. I am thinking of placing it here so I can gain three doubloons. It also means it'll be easier for me to do the other sides of different colors since this is the only Spanish cube we have on here. So I'll gain a total of two and one, three more doubloons, which is going to be helpful. And then I'll place that combat token face down here because after we place four cubes on here and we remove them, we gain a victory point per combat tile that we have. Before we move to Jacques' turn, one thing I was thinking of doing, but I'm not sure that I could. So I'm not going to do it here, but let me know if I can, <laughs> because I want to know. I was in combat. During combat, I can remove these to increase my combat value. Could have I increased it all the way to five, spending all three of these, not used it, but then I am at five for combat, then only being one away from being able to get these chase pirates out because I need six? Or is that cheating and instead, I, when if I spend these, I have to use that combat this round? I, I can't tell. I feel like I want to be able to move it up to five, but I'll, I'll just find a different way. We're now to Jock's turn. He will do the third thing on this card. So that means he's going to place one of those tokens on location 11. That means we just snuck him out. Location 11 is Maracaibo. So we got there first. He won't place a token since he can't. Now it's back to us. 
it would be great if I can move into this lost city here, but unfortunately, we're not able to do that until our explorer gets past the blue uh, double lines here. I haven't even moved my explorer yet. <laughs> so I think instead, we're going to move one, two, and just end in location 14. We're going to discard this patron. Uh, it has some tobacco on it, so we can deliver the tobacco here. And then this means we'd have to discard our entire hand to gain four doubloons, and then we'd gain one victory point per combat tile that we have. Well, we only have one combat tile, so we'll score one point, but I am going to discard all five of these cards so that then I gain four more doubloons. Delivering that tobacco means we can remove this token. We now can spend one doubloon for 10 points. I don't know why we wouldn't do that, so I'll spend the one doubloon for 10 points. We'll place our ship token here to denote that we did this, and we score one point for the one combat tile that we have, so that puts us up to 11 points, plus four more doubloons, which is great. And of course, I threw it on the board. We discarded our entire hand for those four doubloons, so we drew six more cards. This will be our last card for Jacques that we know he does not claim end of round. That will be round four. He's going to go to location 13, placing out a token. It appears while we went to the south, he went slightly in north, going to this spot, delivering that sugar. We have a couple choices here. We could move to Puerto Cabezas and complete this quest, plus deliver the corn. So that would allow us to remove one of our ship tokens. And so that symbol is a compass. It kind of looks funny. We gain two doubloons because we only have one compass. Every board starts with one compass and another worker. Uh, and it's a quest that we need to do. But I can also do this quest. And this quest lets us move up our combat value by one and do a combat. And I, yeah, I go back and forth. I think after saying that, one, two, three, four, five, we can move five. We'll move here. Now we're at a village. That means we could do village actions. I moved five spaces. So that would give us two village actions. Or I can try and complete this quest. And I'm going to complete this quest. In order to complete this quest, I would need two maps. However, because of my specific ability, I can discard these two cards that each have sugar and say sugar equals maps. <laughs> that means I can claim this, uh, this quest, and that's our first one. You can see on the board we start with one compass here, so that means we get to move up our combat value by one, and now we get to do a combat. Also, we'll take this quest and we'll place that quest face down on the bottom left hand side of our shipboard. As we complete quests, we'll move up this. If we have completed three quests, we'll gain three points. And if we complete four or more, every quest that we complete going forward will give us two additional points. We also have one more quest now than Jacques does, which is good. We also get to draw a combat tile, and what I think I'm going to do here is fight against the French. That means we'll gain two victory points. We have three total uh, combat value, and I'm going to spend two of my workers here to add plus two to that. So we're attacking for a total of five. That means we can remove an uh, influence token that's in a city. Two points will move us up to 13. And the best part about helping liberate a city, we get the benefit that's underneath the flag of that city. So we're going to remove this one, gaining three more doubloons. Money, money, money. I like money. So we've got three more doubloons to play with. We'll place this marker here so we can remove one of these ship markers. You can see that's the benefit for placing it here. Once I remove this one, not only do we get this ability going forward, but a one-time effect is gaining four doubloons. We decided not to move to location 20, so now there is a chance that Jacques will. Spot five, no, he's just going to go to location 17. Gosh, these have been good so far. Location 17, putting a token there. He decided to deliver that corn. That's it. So now it's back to us. The only option for us is to move to location 20. You see that red hand? That means we immediately have to stop here. Everyone else would get one more turn if you're playing this with other players, including Jock. He'll get one more turn, and then we'll move to 21A, and that means the, rounds, the round is done. But then he'll start the next round. So we do, though, at location 20, we gain either uh, a combat value or moving up two on the exploration track. I do want to mention rounds, uh, round four will move up here uh, instead of moving to 21A. I'd like to move up the exploration track. Now, I could just move one and stop there, gaining the two points. You don't have to use all the movement that you generate for exploration. But I want to move up this track. i got to get to the green one if possible. So I'm going to move there, simply gaining one more doubloon. But doubloons gives us project cards. Project cards gives us lots of awesome things. <laughs>
Jacques will draw his next card. This will be his last one regardless. Oh, and this one, because we're in round six, he will claim end of round. You can see here, Jacques does not reveal a card next turn. Instead, he triggers the round end if no other player does it first, but we will do it first. He will then, during round end, score victory points from the cards that he drew, plus 15 if he was the one that claimed end of round. Jacques will score 10, 20, 35 total points, which actually isn't terrible. We're going to be behind him. We're going to have to claw our way back. Then what we'll do is all of these cards will shuffle them up and place them underneath any of the cards that he did not draw. You can hardly see, but Jacques here is at 35. We're only at 13. However, for our turn, then we'll go here, claiming that because it's in a beige background, and then we get three points, one, two, three, we're at 16, and now the round is over. We'll now move into the interim scoring portion of the game. You'll do that three times, and then after the round end of the fourth round, we'll do this upper track. So the first thing we can do is buy a card from either our hand or from our prepare area, and then make sure we draw up to our hand size, which is six. Or if we choose not to buy a card, we can just gain two victory points. I'm definitely buying a card. We'll buy the treasure that we prepared. It was 16 total doubloons. That's kind of a lot. But it gives us this anchor synergy token. So now any of the cards, like for an example, this one that we build, will increase our income track by four when we build this because we have that synergy token. We are going to move up three on the income track. And once we have five ship upgrades, which we already have two, almost three, once we have five, we'll increase our victory point income track by three. This means during round end, we'll be able to generate 11 doubloons. Apparently, I forgot to draw my hand up to six cards. I only have four in my hand. I must have forgotten the end of my last turns. So I'll draw these two, oh, a master builder, and we have a sailor. We'll put both of those into our hand. Then we move to the income step. I'll gain 11 doubloons plus the four that I had before, so I have 15 doubloons. Unfortunately, I have no victory point income yet, so I won't gain any victory points. We'll then remove all the goods that were delivered on the board. So for example, this one in Santiago, I'll remove that. Then what we'll do is we'll refresh the display, and then we'll reveal the next prestige card. Then if we were playing the campaign, something potentially could happen, but we're not playing the campaign. And then we move all of our ships, aka just ours, back to Havana for round two. We have refreshed the display, and I see two that I really like. I love this one because it gives us plus one on the exploration track, and it would give us four more doubloon income. And then this Legionnaire would move our combat up by four one time, which is super helpful. Now, this card is what you call an assistant. You can see it says in 12 in Santa Marta. What you have to do is you have to spend the doubloons when you buy this uh, project card, place one of your workers from your supply, not the general supply, but from your supply out onto spot 12. When you go there, you could then activate this ability instead of doing either the village action or the city action that's there. If you don't do that or you pass that uh, assistant without using it, you gain two victory points. A lot of people forget that. The next prestige card is an abbey. You gain four victory points per barrier that you've passed on the exploration track. That would be zero right now, but if I do get to that green, that's 12 additional points. Nothing to scoff at. That was it. That was round one. Let's start round two. Jacques will go first. He is going to place... I just must have grabbed the cards that have the most token placing. I haven't done that as much. Usually he's grabbing quests or... Anyways, well, I don't know. He's going to go to location five. Location 5 is Santo Domingo. We no longer can deliver that corn there. Our first action will be to go to Santiago yet again. I know it's only one spot. He's already at location 5, but we're going to discard this cannoneer. It has some tobacco on it, so we can place one here, and then we'll gain a worker and be able to do one village action. We'll say this ship token is our tobacco. That means we'll gain a one-time effect of four more doubloons. That's why I wanted to do that. Love the money. And then one worker goes here, and I'm going to build a project card. This trapper will cost us seven total doubloons, but we now, whenever we move up the exploration track, we get plus one movement. And if ever we skip over our opponent's explorer, we can steal one VP from them. We have four cards in hand. I'm going to spend one doubloon so I can get this pioneer for sure. Our second card will just be from the top of the deck. So that will be this one. We have the aristocrat. Yeah, another one of those. And then we'll replenish the display. We have the explorer. Oh my gosh, I want the explorer. Jacques will go next, drawing card number two. Okay, he is going to move up two on the exploration track. That's actually a great thing. One, two, he's ahead of us. But that means we can now jump him. And if we do, we can steal a VP from him. 
For our turn, we'll spend one, two, three, four, five total movement to move to Puerto Plata. We will discard this missionary for the corn that we need so we can place that here and then move up to on the exploration track. There are still eight influence tokens out there. I need to get this ability where I can use less combat points to remove them. So I am now one away from getting this additional combat ability. We'll place our token here and then normally we'd get to move two spaces, but because we have that trapper, we get to move three spaces. We're only going to use two movement out of the three that we have because we're going to move one. We just passed this red line. That means we'll score six victory points for that. Plus we're gonna steal one from Jacques. So I'm gonna move Jacques down to 34 points and we're going to move up to 17 points. And then our second movement, we're going to move to this quest. If I have two maps, I can complete this quest. And you know what? Because I've got sugar, that'll work. I have one sugar and one map. That will mean I've completed this quest, which means I'll gain one more point. That'll move us up to 18. I still haven't gained the 16, uh, six points from moving past the red spots. So let's just do that right now. That'll move me up to 24 points. And then I can move another three spaces on the exploration track. We'll move from this quest space, one, two, uh, three. Remember, it's normally two, but I've got that trapper that gives me plus one. That will give us three more points and three more doubloons. One, two, three. We're at 27 total points, three more doubloons. We're catching up to Jacques. Just so you can see, we're at 27 compared to 34 for Jacques. We also have our second quest completed. Technically, as a free action, we now could remove this worker and gain two more doubloons because we have two quests completed. But I'm thinking of going for at least one more, and that would also give me two victory points. So I'll wait. I can draw a total of three cards. I think I'm going to play one or pay one doubloon to grab this explorer. Just think we can move a total of four, and it gives us another synergy token in case we get cards that gives us benefits for this synergy token. So I think I'm going to grab that. That's four cards. The final two that we'll draw, we have the harbor. Oh, look at, see, that would give us four victory points if we built that guy. And we have another sailor. Not to mention, we need to replace that one card. We have a quest hunter. I'm feeling pretty good right now. We're ahead of Jacques on quest and on the exploration track. Okay, this is card number three. Let's see, okay, he's going to go to location 11, which is Maracaibo, blocking that so we can't deliver anything there. That is a big bummer, but it is what it is. Before we go back to our turn, I need to remember at the end of round one, we should have placed a quest tile out in location 15. We'll place that here. We can gain three victory points, two doubloons for each compass by spending one combat point. For our third turn, we're going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, coming here to Maracaibo, simply doing a combat. Looking at our combat tile, I think I'm going to do France, gaining four combat points. Just doing a village, we're going to uh, help liberate San Juan, putting this onto our board. We'll place that right here, gaining our third worker from our general supply to our supply. And now we have three combat tokens. I did not play any cards, so no worries there. We'll go to round four, and he is going to steal a quest from locations two through 19, any one of those that there's a quest. That means he's grabbed this quest, he now has one, and we can no longer do that quest in location 15. Bummer. I can't believe I don't have any sugar, but we're still gonna do it. We're gonna move one, two, we have to forego the sugar, but that's gonna increase our combat value by three, which is what we need to be able to put out the chase pirates. This will move us up to six. This will be Jacques' fifth, turn okay he's just going to move one up on the exploration track he'll still be a total of three spaces behind us for our turn we will move to puerto cabezas we will spend this aristocrat who needs him anyways so we can place the corn out and then i need to be able to complete this quest with two spy glasses i have that with the master builder and the sailor here so that quest will also be completed giving us another worker and we only have one compass but that's two more doubloons We'll then replace that with the one on top here, and that one will be all about maps and removing tokens from your ship. We've removed this token, and now we have this third combat option for ourselves. And remember, we can do one of each of these. So if I had a total of 10 combat, I could do 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is kind of awesome. Two more doubloons as well. Three quests now completed. And because of that, I can remove this, scoring two more points and two more doubloons. Look at all this money. We'll sneak up to 29 points. 
You know Jacques is totally going to claim end of round here. Let's see what he does. No, he doesn't. At round six, he's just going to move one up the uh, the exploration track. He's still behind us. I'll take it. I get so excited in this game, I forget to draw my hand back up. I should have three more cards. So we also have the Mark Pirate, another Master Builder, and what did I draw? Oh, a Smuggler. Since Jacques did not claim end of round, one, two, three, we definitely will. So we'll go to location 20. We're going to move up three on the exploration track. We'll move one, two. Now we could forego this, but I do think I can complete it. So three, so we can pick up this quest. I really loved this pioneer, but I'm giving him up because he is the herbs that we need. And we've got one sugar that we can use as if it was herbs for the two to complete that quest. That'll be two more doubloons because we still only have one of those compasses and another one of our workers. We only have one left. Uh, we'll place it here, though, and that will give us a one-time benefit of three points. We almost caught up with Jacques. One, two, three. We're at 32. Jacques will then draw his last card. Yeah, that one's claiming end of round for sure. So let's see how many points he scored. He's got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, 45. So 45 points, but we got to the end first, so no additional 15. That moves him to a measly 79 points. <laughs> We, of course, will then shuffle up all of his cards because he used all seven, and we'll move here, gaining the one-time benefit of three points. Jacques will start the next round. Three points. One, two, three. We're at 35. We can now buy a card. I'm definitely going to do that. Before doing that, we need to draw our hand up to six. We've got an embassy, <laughs> and we have the figurehead. That gives us six cards. The card we're going to buy is this branch office. That will move up our total income generation by six. So really we're only paying, what, uh, three coins for this? <laughs> I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine for it, and I have to spend three goods that are the same. I have two corn with these two cards and then some sugar that, hey, can be any type of good or object. That is such an amazing ability. So that means I've built this card. We'll now generate a total of 17 doubloons around. I discarded three cards so I can draw three more. We have Conquer Village. We have the, what, Branch Office and an, some um, Privateer Raids. We then move to Income Generation. We have 17 total doubloons plus the 10 we had before. We have 27 doubloons. Unfortunately, no VP income generation, but I'm hoping to change that. We'll remove these cubes from the board, and now we'll replenish our display. I see another privateer raid, and I love it. <laughs> I'm going all in on those anchors, apparently. The next prestige card we could potentially build costs 25 instead of 20, but your income track, your income track has victory points, uh, on the bottom of it, uh, depending on how far up you get, you get double the VP as an additional uh, benefit at the end of the game. Right now, that wouldn't be amazing for us. That would only be a double of this. That would be two points. But if you got all the way up to here, that would be 20 points. So that could be really good if you have a lot of income generation. We've now completed round two. We'll place this quest in location 18. After two rounds, I'm feeling pretty good. However, I still have seven of these influence markers on here, so I need to get rid of all of them. I only got rid of three in the first two rounds. But if I can get my Explorer Plast past this blue marker, I'll be able to do this combat, that combat, and a potential of this combat way up here, which you can't see when we get to location 20. So overall, I think, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> we'll start with Jacques again for round three. Jacques will be starting the third round. The first thing he's going to do is move himself up two on the exploration track. For all of my talk of being so far in front of him, he will move one, two. He's now within two of actually getting ahead of us. Our first action will move to Santiago yet again, discarding this master builder that has some tobacco so we can deliver that good. I now have four ship upgrades, so because of that, I can now do this upgrade. So I'm going to remove one of these from here. I can do this one once I have six upgrades, and there are two upgrades on this board where you have to do the, the top one first, followed by the one with the arrow second. The other upgrade that's like that is the one here. You first have to get this upgrade, followed by this one. We'll place that token here to denote we delivered the tobacco and grab our last one of our workers. We still have two on our career card that we haven't uh, received yet. Look at all of those workers. 
We'll draw one card. I'm going to spend one buck so I can get these privateer raiders. Hopefully I can build them. They will be insane if we continue to uh, use that synergy token of the anchor. Jacques will go next, flipping the next card, and they are going to take a quest from spaces two through seven. That will be their second quest. There are no quests out between locations two and seven, so he's simply going to take the top one that's here. We'll flip that over, and that's his second quest he's completed. My goodness, you guys, I totally missed my village action here. Let me do that to catch ourselves up from the last turn. We'll pay seven doubloons. I have 10 here, so I'll get three back. And I have to give up one of my workers for the rest of the game, and I'm going to place them in location nine. I'm also going to grab this synergy token, so I now have two. Do I have any cards that have that? No, I don't. If I have any cards out that had that synergy, uh, synergy ability with that, they'd immediately come into play. We don't have one, so we won't do that. But now, if I go to location nine, I can do the action here to gain two doubloons and move four on the exploration track because I have that tra uh, trapper. We'll place that assistant right here in location nine, and that would mean I should have drawn another card. So I have the conquer village card. Now that we've caught ourselves up from the prior turn, for our current turn, we're going to move our ship one, two, three, four, five, six. I know, I'm skipping both of these. I'm not sure that's right, but I'm going to do it. And then in this space, I could do a village action. And since I moved six, I would get a total of two village actions. But instead, I'm going to uh, visit my assistant. That means we'll gain the two doubloons, and we can move up a total of four on this track. So we're going to move one, two. We'll gain four points because we're the first one that went by that. And then three, four, so we can gain three more coins or doubloons and three more victory points. So I'm going to gain seven victory points, gaining three more doubloons on top of the two that we already earned. I love it. We'll move from 35 to 42. We did not play any cards, so we'll move right to Jacques and his third action. Oh, he's going to put one of those blasted tokens on Maracaibo. That is a real big bummer. I was planning on going there and getting my ship upgrade. I had this great plan, and he blocked us. Since Jacques did such a nasty move, I think we're just going to move one space. We're now at a village. That means we can do a village action. Remember the three things we can do. Buy a card that's either in our prep area or in our hand. We can simply gain one doubloon, or we can discard our entire hand for two doubloons. I think I'm going to play the Privateer Raid. Now, this cost 11 total doubloons. I still have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 doubloons left. Jeez, I had so much money. Uh, and I'm going to have to decrease my combat value, which I have at 6, down to 3. But then I can increase my income by 4. And because I have that synergy token, the anchor, I can increase my VP income by 4. We'll go from six to three total combat points. Our income track will go from 17 to 21. And we're finally on the board for victory point income. I'm not interested in any of the cards that are in the display, so I'll just draw the top card. We have a captain. This will be turn four for Jacques. Jacques on turn four is simply going to move up one on the exploration track. Face it, Jacques, you're not going to catch me on this one. <laughs> Hopefully. Because our explorer has now passed the double blue line, we can go to this hidden city. So the next thing we're going to do for our action is just move two. And we're going to, well, first do our delivery, and then we can increase our combat points by three and do a combat. And for a corn, I've got the perfect card for it, Conquer Village. I don't like it anyways. I'm discarding it, and that will allow us to uh, upgrade our ship. This is great because we'll be able to remove this token here, and now we get a one-time effect of either moving up four on the exploration track, four points and four doubloons, or if you're playing the competitive version, you could get influence, you'd move to the next noble rank. We're, we don't have to worry about that. We're not doing that part. So it, we're going to definitely grab the four exploration, and we'll move our combat points back up to six. We also have five ship upgrades, so we can increase our VP income by three, and for a free action, we can remove this and we'll gain three victory points and three more doubloons. I'm going to grab the three doubloons now so I don't forget. Two and one is three. Only one more of these, if we can get to that green space, we'll be able to remove this, gaining four uh, victory points, four doubloons, plus two more victory points and two doubloons because we finished this card. There were a ton of triggers there, so let's make sure we do all of this in order so we don't get lost. First things first, I'll place that here. That means we did the ship upgrade, so we get four total exploration. 
We'll move up four. One, two, three. I could stay here, but I can only have a total of eight uh, combat points. I already have six, so two of those would be lost. I'll just take the two points. So I end here, I'll get two points. We'll move from 42 to 44. Because we have five ship upgrades, we'll increase our VP income by three to seven. And we gained three more points, one, two, three, for completing that career objective for our ship upgrades of five. <gasps> okay, I think I captured everything. That was awesome. Now we'll actually do our combat. Looking at this combat tile, I've decided to fight the English. That means I have a combat value of three. I'm going to spend three of these for a total of six combat points. That means with this red ability now, we, for three of those six combat points, can remove an influence from a city, and then the other three, we can remove one from one of the villages. That's two birds with one stone, and because we remove this one that has a flag, that means we'll gain one of those workers that we spent right back to our supply. So we have four again in our supply. This is what we call a very fruitful turn because we're going to place one of those influence markers here. That will give us one point. Then, because we have this completely filled out, we'll gain three doubloons. Two plus one is three. And then we have had a total of four combats, so we have four combat tokens. We'll gain four more points. So I'm going to gain five points from this, removing all of these from here. And then we'll place our second one in this spot so we gain three more doubloons one two three which i will take we'll move from 47 to 52. i don't see any cards in the display that i particularly want so we're going to get the patron which also i don't particularly want it's jacques turn let's see is he going to claim end of round no round five he's not he's simply going to place one of those markers on location 17. that means he's going to block this for me that's okay not the end of the world for this next turn, we're going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've moved seven spaces. We're at a village. That means I can do three village actions. Our first village action, we're going to spend seven doubloons and then three total goods so we can put out the branch office. You can see here I have two tobacco and one sugar, but because of our ability, that can be any good. Uh, so I'm going to call it a tobacco. So that's the three that we need. This will increase our income track by six. We'll move from 21 up to 27. Our second village action, we're going to buy the chase pirates that we prepared a long time ago. That just costs us six combat points, but we have it. We'll increase our income track by four and our VP track by four. This is insane. <laughs> and then our third action, we're just going to discard the two cards in our hand for two more doubloons. That means we have a total of 12 doubloons left. We'll move from 27 to 31 and 7 to 11 on the VP track. We'll end our turn simply by drawing six cards. If Jacques does not claim end of round in round six, we will. Ah, oh, bummer. He does. So that means he will gain an additional 15 points. Now we will technically get one more turn, then he'll claim that end of round, uh, but he will gain 15 additional points. Oh, 15, so that's 20. 25, 30, 35, 45, 55 points. And we'll shuffle all these back in underneath here. That moves him to 134 points. He's almost lapped us. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, we get our last turn, which will be us simply moving to location 20. We won't get the three additional victory points here. He then claims the end of round at, the, at his next turn. And so that's why in the final round, the only good thing about this is we will start the final round, round four. But we can do a combat or move up the exploration track by three. I've decided to do the combat here, and I can only choose between France and England. I definitely think I'm going to do France. I gain one doubloon. That will put us to 13 doubloons. I'm going to spend three out of the four of my workers. <laughs> so I have a total combat value of six. I can spend three to do a city, and I can spend three to do a village. So I can remove two cubes that way. We'll remove the one in Tortuga, and then we'll remove this one, gaining two more doubloons. I'll then place each of these on either side here. So that means we'll be able to remove one of our discs from our board and we'll gain one of our workers back. So that puts us back to having two of them. I'll remove one from here. After I do this one, I then have a total of six upgrades so I can try and do this one, hopefully getting 13 points from my ship. Maybe even 19 if I get lucky, but I doubt that. 
We'll now do our final interim scoring. Going here, we can either gain two victory points or buy a card. Definitely buying a card. We'll buy Dr. Edward for 10 doubloons. If ever we need to discard healing herbs, we always have one from him. And then he's going to increase our income and VP track. Felt like that was worth it. We'll move ourselves up to 33 total income and 13 victory points for income. We will then move to the income phase. We'll gain 33 doubloons. We already have five, so we'll have 38. We'll also gain 13 victory points going from 52 to 65. We've removed all the discs from the board. I will then refresh all four of these cards in the display. And I need to remember that I should draw one card from the top of there because I played a card, so I should have six in my hand. The final prestige card, which I really need to do at least one of those this game, <laughs> is the Minister. You get one or three VP per synergy token. I only have two, so that'd be six VP. Eh, not great. And with that, we can move to Havana, and we have our final round. Final round! Okay, the first thing we are most certainly going to do, because we are the first ones to go there, Santiago, we will discard this captain with some tobacco so we can deliver it. That will immediately gain us three victory points. We'll place that disc here, and then we gain one of our workers, so we now have three workers, and we get a village action. We'll spend 25 doubloons out of our 38 that we have, giving up one worker, gaining two more points, so I get to move up five on the track. I need to remember that. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. I'm at 65, so that'll move us up to 70. And then at the end of the game, we get to look at the income track and get VP times two. Right now, we have nine, so this is worth 18. If I can get one more, uh, one more income uh, generation, we could get 20 points from this. That's why it's so expensive. Oh, I also get another synergy token. I get the crown token. Whenever you do one of these prestige buildings, you get a crown token. Sometimes I get so excited. I need to remember I need to place out this quest right here in location 12. We'll place that quest right here. Now it's Jacques' turn. First thing he's going to do, move up on the exploration track two times. At this point, I'm really not worried about him catching me. I don't think. I swear I'm not this terrible normally. <laughs> I should have drawn a card. We have the pinnacle. I think we are going to move to Puerto Plata. One, two, three, four, five. We can use this healer for some corn so we can deliver that. And then we can move up on the exploration track up to three times. We can remove that disc right here. One more, and that's a total of 10 points. Three times is great and all, but I'm thinking of only moving one time. That's because I can move to this quest. And because of that ridiculous ability, I can spend both of these cards, which both have sugar on them as uh, maps, and complete this. Now, I still only have one compass. It's annoying. So that will give me two doubloons, though, which is nice. So I've got two doubloons plus two victory points for the uh, influence there. And then, because this is our fourth quest, actually it's our fifth, fifth and going forward, each quest gives you two points. So we'll move up four points as well. We'll place that quest here. Four points, we move from 70 to 74. Jacques is back at it. This will be his second action. He is going to move up on the exploration track one space. Still trying to catch up to me, I see. What I will do then is move one, two, three, four to my assistant and use his ability. That will be two more doubloons and four on the exploration track. We'll move one, two, three, four, scoring four points here, plus four points here, and four more doubloons because of that. And I'm going to score something additional because I just went across the green, the double green line. Four more doubloons, eight victory points. We'll move from 74 to 82. We also have completed our Explorer track, so that will give us a total of four victory points and four more doubloons, and then we will be able to flip this over for two more victory points and two more doubloons. So that's a total of six doubloons and six victory points. And then you flip this over and it looks like a flag. <laughs> we'll move from 82 to 88. I think I'm going to prepare this pinnacle card, and actually I'm going to prepare this sailor card. I don't know which one I'm going to do, but my uh, prepare spots are wide open. So I'm going to prepare both of those. That means I only have one card left in my hand, so I will draw a total of five. One, two, three, four, five. Five cards. Let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll see these as we play if they're helpful. The good thing is I see sugar. 
It's back to Jacques, turn three. Let's see what he's going to do. Okay, he's going to move up one on the exploration track. We'll sneak him over one space. I'm very concerned Jacques is going to claim end of round on us. We really want those eight additional points, plus I don't want to give him 15. So I am going to skip Maracaibo, which hurts a little bit. We're going to move one, two, three, jumping into here. I have this receive honor card, which has some corn on it. I'm going to discard that so we can deliver that here. This will allow us to score 10 points from our ship. We'll place that disc here, moving from 88 to 98. We'll increase our combat value from 0 to 3 and draw a combat token. This one's easy. We're just going to do the English. We only need two total combat. We have four. We'll remove the final one from a village. And that means we have now had, I don't know, six combats now? I've confirmed it. We've had six total combats, which is great because we'll complete this gaining three more doubloons. I'll do that. And then six victory points. And then we'll remove all of these yet again. We'll sneak up from 98 to 104. We'll draw one card only this time, another Master Builder. Not helpful at the end of the game. This is turn four, our last safe turn from Jacques. Jacques is going to take a quest from locations two through 19. He can grab this one at location 12. That's his third one, but that's okay. We have five. We definitely have more than he does. This will be at turn five for us. I think we're going to move one, two, three, four. Because we moved four spaces, we ended in a village. I get two village actions. Our first village action is spending 10 doubloons to put out this pinnacle. We immediately gain six victory points because we've done six combat, or we have six combat tokens, and we increase our income track by four. The six points puts us up to 110. Our income track maxes out with only one more increase. If you get more increases than that, you actually increase your VP track. So we'll increase this three times. So we're at 16 for VP. We'll, we'll have 10 victory points for coins in the final round. Because in the final round, of course, doubloons are not worth anything. You look down at the bottom here and you see how many points you, you earn. Our second action will be to pay 20 more doubloons. Yes, I have 20 more, but this means all of my doubloons are gone. I also have to spend two of my workers. They're going to go on an expedition. I want them to go exploring. This will increase our income uh, amount by two, which is victory points for us, and then two more victory point ones by four. So that's a total of 10 for our increase of our victory point income. We already have a victory point income of 16. We'll move up to 20. That was four. Now, because we want to move up more and we can't, what we do is we look at the amount of rounds that are remaining. We only have one round. We will score 20 points immediately and then start back off at zero. However, let's say we had done this in round three because there'd be two rounds left. You'd actually score 40 points and then put that back to the zero space on the track. Since we're doing this in round four, we just gain 20 points place our cube back at zero, and then increase it to four again. That's all eight victory points. That also sneaks us from 110 to 130 points. We have no money left. I'm just going to draw one card. Oh my gosh, this Legionnaire air would have been awesome. Jacques will go next, looking at card five. He's just going to place something at location 17. That's totally fine. It's like he's here at Puerto Cabezas. I think for our turn then, we're just going to go to location 20. That's going to claim end of round. That way he won't gain the additional 15 victory points. He will st still get to draw cards. And this time, we're going to move up to here and then move up to here before we claim official end of round. Up here, we have to do the combat because if we don't, we lose because there are two more cubes on the board. It's France, so we have to fight France. In order to clear out the two villages, we need a total of five combat. We have four here, so we'll just spend this one worker to make that five. And that means we removed the final two of these, which is great. We can place these influence cubes in two different spots, definitely gaining one point with this one. And we can remove one of these ship tokens. I think you can see this. Just in case for some crazy reason we can get one more off, we can get six points. But this will give us one. That will sneak us to 131 points. Let's see if he jumps to location 20 for round six. Yes, he does. I am so glad I went there. Okay, he won't draw anymore. We will just count up his points. He has 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30, 40 points. That will place Jacques at 174. So that's what we need to beat. We'll then move to 21B. We score three points. I could do some free actions. I'm not going to do any free actions. We'll then move here for five points, claiming the official end of round. So we'll gain eight points there. And just because I cannot buy cards because I don't have any money, I am also going to gain two victory points here for a total of 10, doing the final round scoring. I'll move from 131 to 141. We then move to income generation, but instead of gaining doubloons, we'll gain victory points. We have 10 points here plus four, so that's 14 points plus four, 141 is 155. And you know what? I think we might have actually won the game because if we go here, we gain points for those prestige buildings. This prestige building will give us 20 points, pointing us to 175. That's great and all, but we're not even done yet. We can still count all the points on the cards that we have. We have 24 total points here, not to mention we have more quests than him and we have more exploration than he does. So that's another 10 points. That's, 100, uh, that's 34 total points that we earned. That means we scored 209 points to the 174 points for Jacques. Oof. Well, that was good. I did feel like we had an easier set of the AI cards, or I was just, he kept just blocking these spots instead of getting quest, uh, quest tokens. Usually I lose against him with quests, but I got five quests this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, this game though is so much fun. And when you're playing four player and you're all trying to stay above Jacques and you can work together even on that exploration track and jumping each other. Uh, but you also have to work together on, oh, who's going to deliver the good? Am I going to go there and take care of this quest? Yeah, I really enjoyed. I've played a four player, a two player, and now a solo. I've enjoyed every player count. I will say that I was super bummed that the influence track isn't used because I think how this works is so cool. Uh, and so it really makes me want to play the base game as well. So let me know if you would like to see a playthrough where we actually use the influence track, but that way we're actually trying to conquer the land. <laughs> Regardless, thank you so much for watching. This has been one of my favorite games I've played in 2022. I know it's not a 2022 game, but gosh, it's good. <laughs> Thanks again, and I'll catch you at the next stop.